as a boy growing up here in Western Connecticut, I spent a lot of time on the Aspetuck River and the Saugatuck River uh, fishing and had a little Boston whaler out on the sound doing fishing, camping, water skiing, and so forth. So this topic is really near and dear to my heart. Uh, I love all water and all nature, but uh, this one uh, really hits home. And uh, the topic of our conversation is the ecological restoration in the Long Island Sound region. And more specifically, ecological restoration that has been done or is being done or is planned to be done by a great organization called Save the Sound, based here in New Haven, Connecticut. For those of you that are not familiar with Long Island Sound, it's a tidal estuary. It's between Long Island, New York, on the, to the south, and Connecticut to the north. It's about 120 miles long, and at its widest point, it's 21 miles uh, in width. It's fed by freshwater tributaries, and the Atlantic Ocean, salt water from the Atlantic Ocean. So it's got a mixture. It's a really precious estuary for uh, a lot of uh, uh, natural species. So I'd like to introduce our guests from Save the Sound. We have Gwen McDonald. Gwen is the uh, director of green projects and restoration at Save the Sound, and we have Alex Crofta, the Ecological Restoration Projects Manager. And I had the opportunity to meet Alex about a year ago at a Patagonia event, a Patagonia store in Westport, Connecticut. Uh, Future Frogman is actually partnered with Patagonia. And uh, Save the Sound was, was there. I, I joined Save the Sound that evening, and we saw a screening of a wonderful Patagonia film called Blue Heart which I'd highly recommend. I noticed that it is now available on YouTube. Uh, so you can see the whole film there. And it's really about uh, wild rivers in Eastern Europe and the associated cultures and ecosystems that are threatened by approximately 3000 hydropower plants there. It's really a, an excellent film. And uh, it talks about uh, the value of preventing dam construction and and taking dams down, uh, how how that can uh, uh, impact uh, favorably or negatively, depending upon the scenario of what's going on there. So uh, one of the things we're going to talk about tonight is uh, dam removal and the work that Save the Sound does on that, uh, as well as other ecological restoration projects that they work on. I recently had the opportunity to meet Gwen as well, having met Alex a year ago, recently met Gwen, and uh, really just so impressed by both Gwen and Alex that I asked them if they would be, uh, be my guest. So with that, uh, I'd like to ask you, Gwen, um, I noticed that you've been with Save the Sound for about 10 years now, uh, initially uh, overseeing restoration projects, and, and now you're, uh, uh, looks like you're overseeing the entire program, uh, kind of from soup to nuts. So uh, could you tell us uh, more about maybe starting with your background, your education, and, and how your career has evolved? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Richard. That was a, a wonderful introduction to the, the sound and um, I really appreciate it. It's a, an interesting place to be and, and it's been uh, fun to, to work on projects um, for, yeah, 10 years now. Um, so I uh, have been sort of living and playing in rivers for <laughs> for a really long time since I was a very little kid. Um, actually, up in the, the picture in the background of my uh, Zoom call right now is uh, is up in the Adirondacks, and I uh, uh, spent a lot of time there as a kid, and um, actually ended up going to um, uh, undergrad at uh, SUNY ESF, which is an environmental science and forestry college up in Syracuse that also has uh, owns uh, 700 acres up in the Adirondacks and uh, uses that as a classroom and a facility to study all sorts of um, uh, 
environmentally related fields. Uh, and so my particular focus was uh, ecological engineering and, uh, and that's sort of applying engineering principles to the natural world. Um, and, uh, and that uh, I was lucky enough to have that really inform what I get to do for a living. Not everybody uh, is, is that lucky and I feel pretty fortunate to do that. Um, I, for a while, I was working in uh, engineering consulting before I came to Save the Sound, um, but uh, my interest has been in these natural systems that was cultivated um, both through uh, really play and my own interests as a kid and then through, um, you know, scientific uh, engagement in, uh, in, in uh, formal education. Um, at Save the Sound, uh, the uh, program uh, historically, we partnered with local land trusts and other groups that would um, maybe their focus was a one-off restoration project in a piece of land that they may have owned. Uh, and so um, Save the Sound's role was to maybe bring resources to a project like that. But the projects were very different. They, they um, it wasn't necessarily a a barrier removal, dam removal wasn't necessarily always a component and, uh, um, you know, it, it really was dependent on the partners that, that we had on any individual project. Uh, and I was hired in uh, 2010 um, after uh, the uh, American Recovery and Reinvestment Act after the uh, recession. Uh, Save the Sound was awarded a, a two and a half million dollar grant to uh, complete two very large restoration projects in New Haven and in East Lyme, uh, Connecticut, uh, for the restoration of fish passage um, on the West River and uh, Bride Brook. Um, and so uh, th those projects um, allowed me to build relationships with some of our statewide um, restoration partners and um, it really uh, demonstrated a need to have a group of people that are able to take lessons that you're learning on one project and apply them to the next project. Um, and, uh, you know, land trusts and folks that are doing things on an individual parcel, their main, that may be the only, you know, that problem may exist one time on their particular piece of land that they're working with. And, uh, and so sometimes those lessons that you learn uh, through every project um, get lost. And so that's been, um, it's, I think the size of the program now has really, uh, is a demonstration to, uh, to how much of a need there was for that. So um, fast forward, um, you know, we can talk more about, about ecological restoration, but uh, uh, fast forward to, to now and, and um, we have a robust team of, of people that are working on um, a variety of different kinds of projects, both in, um, ecological restoration in uh, like barrier removal and fish passage and um, living shorelines and some of the pro projects that um, Alex works on to our um, urban green infrastructure work um, where we're focusing more on stormwater. Um, but all of those projects benefit the Long Island Sound ecosystem uh, and all of them um, work towards the Eco ecological restoration. Um, and when we say that, what we mean is, uh, is working with nature, is working with to, uh, nature to restore natural processes, um, as opposed to restoring something in its form. So restoring function instead of form. Um, and, and yeah, that's, that's a little background on me and our, our program. That, that's interesting to hear function versus form. And it, it, it reminds me of your engineering training mm -hmm. um and i when we spoke recently i i had not realized you were an engineer and that, that's uh, that's quite interesting uh and and now in your role i mentioned before soup to nuts and what what i meant by that and you can articulate it better but you're you're dealing with the upfront design the execution or implementation the the uh qualifying and hiring of various contractors, subcontractors. And uh, I understand you even get involved with uh, helping potentially fund the projects uh, through grants and so forth. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, sure. Yeah. So we are, uh, it, I think that may be 
uh, it's it's a really um, interesting part of this job. It doesn't, I mean, I think with many, many, um, many jobs, you're sort of working in one particular component of a project. Um, and with this, we're kind of herding cats <laughs> and working with each of uh, each of the different um, components at, as you go along. So um, definitely, uh, you know, our our program is grant funded. Um, and so uh, we are raising funds to, to work on a collection of projects. And so every time we finish a new project, there's, uh, or finish a project, there's a new one uh, that fills in and, and that, um, you know, compiled together uh, forms our program. Um, but in addition, so we're, we're identifying projects and funding sources for those projects. Um, identifying and collaborating with um, design engineers and consultants uh, to to you know put pen to paper and and draw up design plans or you know in in, in some projects uh, working on those things in-house uh, working with construction contractors uh, to actually implement the projects and um, and our regulatory partners to permit them um, we're also and this is something that um, we've been able to um, get into more of is our monitoring program uh, and so that uh, is is a is a component that uh, if you know there's just one one or two of us it's it's not possible to add and then in, in house um, but since uh, since the we our numbers are greater we're now able to monitor and and uh, to talk about the the um, results uh, ecological results of some of our our projects Thanks for watching. For more information, visit our website at www.futurefrogmen.org.